The next item of business is a statement by Fergus Ewing, an update on common agricultural payments. The Cabinet Secretary will take questions at the end of his statement and there should therefore be no interventions or interruptions. Uh, I call on Fergus Ewing. Up to 15 minutes, please, Mr Ewing. Uh, thank you, President Officer. I want to start off by thanking all the staff working in Edinburgh and at the 17 area offices around Scotland who have worked flat out since May to progress the 2015 payments. On the visits I've made, I've seen firsthand the dedication of our staff in helping to resolve this issue, often going above and beyond normal expectations to ensure that farmers get their money as soon as possible. And their efforts have paid off. Substantial progress has been made. By 30th June, almost £310 million was paid out to farm businesses, with more than £110 million of this since the end of May. Work has continued apace over summer to process and progress the remaining payments, the most complex cases. As a result, the tail of 2015 payments has been larger than we might normally expect, but I can assure members that we are working hard to resolve these and aim to pay the majority of outstanding cases by the middle of next month. Moreover, signing officer, everyone eligible but not yet paid should have been offered a loan. This summer, I asked officials to ensure we were delivering on that promise, and I'm, I'm pleased to advise Parliament that over 30 new loan offers have been made in recent weeks. In many more cases, the need for a loan has disappeared as people have received their cap payment. I can now confirm to members that over 99% of eligible claimants have now had either a cap payment or the offer of a loan. But, presiding officer, I will not be satisfied until every single farmer and crofter entitled to a payment has received it in full. Presiding officer, today we are publishing details of the 2015 cap payments to date. As at uh, last Friday, over 350 £50 million has been injected into Scotland's rural economy through the various payment schemes. Of this total, £326 million has been made in 2015 basic greening and young farmer payments. Over 17,500 farmers, almost 96% of those eligible have received their full payment. Under the LFAS scheme, loans of approximately £54 million out of an estimated total of £66 million were made in March. Technical issues are holding back the final LFAS payments, but as loans have already been provided to over 11,000 eligible applicants, mostly at the rate of 90%, the vast majority of potential payment recipients are largely unaffected. Rural priorities payments of £10 million have already been made with further payments expected later this month, and land manager option payments of £4 million are due to start from October. It should be noted, presiding officer, that these payments are normally made after the other schemes. The vast majority of sheep support payments were made in July, as we said we would, with over, three, uh, over 900 farmers receiving £4.3 million. And we've also nearly completed payments under the mainland and island beef schemes, with £30 million paid out over 7,000 farmers. While we are close to completing payments for 2015, it's clear we are not there yet. Members will recall the EU-wide decision made by Commissioner Hogan in May, called for by the Scottish Government and other EU countries, such as France, that changed the situation radically with penalties waived for payments made from 1st of July to 15th of October. Moreover, the penalty regime applies to the UK as the Member State, and any penalties will be determined by the performance of all four countries. The key now is to complete the vast majority of remaining payments by the mid-October point which is what we aim to do. In May, I also undertook to put 216 payments on an even keel, and that work began with the IT payment system. I've met with the Auditor General, Caroline Gardner, to discuss Audit Scotland's findings on the Futures Programme. I wanted to put matters right, and she is helping us achieve that. And I can advise members we are publishing our response to that report today, having accepted Audit Scotland's recommendations in full. And next week, presiding officer, I shall give evidence to the Rural Economy and Connectivity Committee, whilst officials will appear before the Public Audit Committee at the end of the month. 
and the Auditor General herself will provide a brief update as part of her audit of the Scottish Government accounts for 1516. Officials are inputting to and cooperating with that process in full. I know that we all recognise that there are lessons to be learned and I'm keen to work with Parliament and members to do just that. But there is much we have already learned from this first year of the new cap payment regime and this experience will help to smooth the 216 process. However, some parts of the programme are still being added and developed and will feature for the first time in 2016. Our contractor, CGI, uh, has assured me that the IT system functionality for 216 will be delivered early next year and final processing will be undertaken thereafter. Presenting officer, I therefore expect and anticipate that payments will be made and substantially completed between then and by the end of the payment period, namely by the end of June. I'm happy to report back to Parliament in January next year on progress. However, I'm sure that all of us in this chamber can agree that farmers and their families need certainty in these uncertain times. Uh, despite this uncertainty, we are determined to build sustainable growth in Scotland's rural economy. As part of that, I'm holding a series of summits including with the farming and food sectors to explore how best to deliver investment jobs and opportunities in rural and island communities. We will also be developing a Scottish Rural Infrastructure Plan in 2017 to better coordinate existing and planned expenditure and resources. This will allow a more cohesive approach to economic activity, which benefits our rural, island and coastal communities. But while such activity will help to support future growth, we must also secure the immediate needs of our farmers and ensure cash flow in the rural economy. I'm confident that we are putting the 216 payments on a better footing. I'm also reassured that the arrangements we have put in place with our contractor mean that they should be able to deliver on the timescale they have committed to for payments. But those arrangements are not risk-free and frankly, these are not risks I am prepared to take, particularly with families and communities' livelihoods. Presenting officer, I am therefore announcing today that every farmer and crofter who is eligible for a basic greening or young farmer payment will be able to apply for a loan up to the value of 80% of their entitlement. Letters will be issued before the end of this month two farmers inviting them to apply, and everyone who applies by the deadline of 12th of October will receive a loan of 80% of their entitlement in November. Our aim is for the bulk of payments to be made in the first two weeks of November. This new loan scheme will provide much needed cash flow for normal business costs such as wages, such as feed and seed, such as fuel and fertilizer, at a time of year when these bills often start landing on the doorstep. It will also, presiding officer, give farm businesses the security and certainty they need to take longer term investment decisions, such as for the purchase of new machinery or equipment or facilities. It will not only bring certainty to farmers and crofters, but also those employed in and running supply chain businesses in the wider agricultural sector. Planning officer, our estimates suggest that over 17,000 businesses will be entitled to qualify for this loan initially, with work continuing to make offers and payment to the remaining eligible businesses by the end of the year. This presiding officer has the potential to inject up to 300 million pounds into Scotland's rural economy before the end of the year, securing jobs and investment, stimulating growth, and acting as a bulwark in these uncertain times. Presenting officer, as I said from day one in this job and for the foreseeable future, the resolution of the cap payment issues has been and will remain my top priority as cabinet secretary. I promise to fix it, and I'm fully aware that we are still some way off from that. But I want to reiterate what I said in May, 
that we are sorry that whilst we have made substantial progress, we are not there yet. But I remain absolutely committed and determined to fix this, and I'm getting on with doing just that. To achieve this, we need to set a realistic timetable which our farming community can trust. And we need to be mindful of the extraordinary effort being put in by staff all over Scotland to achieve our objectives. I thank them all for their continuing efforts, and I also thank our farmers and crofters for their patience and their willingness to work with us to help us get it right. In the meantime, I want them, their families, their employees, and everybody working in the agricultural sector in Scotland to know this. By offering certainty and clarity through our loan scheme, by giving them the confidence and security they need to get on with their everyday business and take longer term investment decisions which are good for the rural communities in which they live and work, we are building growth in Scotland's rural economy. And I would hope, uh, presiding officer, in conclusion, that this is an objective and an outcome that everyone in this chamber will welcome. Thank you. The Cabinet Secretary will now take questions on the issues raised in his statement. I intend to allow around 30 minutes for questions, after which we'll move on to the next item of business. Uh, could members who wish to ask questions please press the request to speak buttons now? And I call first of all on Peter Chapman. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer, and I am grateful to the Minister for providing his statement in advance. I refer members to my register of interest regarding farming. The Minister has said today that we need certainty going forward, but he has just confirmed what we all expected. The IT system still doesn't work and is not expected to work in, until well into next year. And that's why some £40 million is still outstanding for this year's payments nine months late. What a slap in the face for farmers who are sitting with record level of debt at a staggering £2.2 billion. And that's why he can't deliver 100% payments in December, as we should expect. And he has in instead to offer an 80% loan. To lady, uh, uh, the Deputy Presiding Officer, this loan is an admission of failure. But we still have problems from this year to face up to. So, so two questions for the Minister. One, when will he deliver the £8 million of LFAS money that is still outstanding? And two, will he recognise that his government has lost the trust of farmers over this fiasco and finally agree to a parliamentary inquiry into the 2015 CAP payments. Fergus Ewing. Um, well, first of all, it is not for, for me as a minister, uh, presiding officer, to state whether the Scottish Parliament should hold an inquiry. It is a matter entirely for this Parliament to decide. Uh, I have already indicated that uh, I am to appear before the Rural Committee, uh, that my officials are to appear before the Audit Committee and that the Auditor General herself is to report further to Parliament. Uh, and I welcome the opportunity to submit to the scrutiny of this Parliament. But it is not for ministers to uh, suggest or far less order Parliaments what to do. Regarding this first question, the Alfast payments, we aim to start payments in September. But uh, I would point out that uh, the vast majority of the, those who are awaiting their payments have already received a loan payment of around about 90%. Um, I think it is fair to state the facts as a whole rather than selectively, uh, presiding officer, uh, and the picture is that as far as LFAS payments go, the vast majority of recipients have received loans, and I believe that those payments started in March and April, and March, of course, is when uh, LFAS payments are normally made, not last December, as, as may have been uh, implied. As far as the second question goes, I recognise and have been quite straightforward in accepting that there have been grave difficulties for the farming community. I still recognize that. That hasn't changed. But when I've attended over the summer eight area offices, uh, when I visited around 11 uh, farming shows, agricultural shows, game fairs, and other events, what I found was that the farming community wanted a realistic assessment and an improvement in respect of 216. 
Uh, I was disappointed that Mr Chapman and the Conservatives did not specifically, therefore, welcome what I believe will be welcomed by the farming community around Scotland. Namely, that earlier than ever before, in the first fortnight of November, uh, we intend that there be distributed up to £300 million before the end of the year. Surely, surely it's not unreasonable to expect that even the Conservatives could find it in their heart to welcome that step, which I'm sure will be appreciated by many farmers today, particularly those who traditionally plan investments at the end of the year. Rhoda Grant. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, can I also thank the Cabinet Secretary for an advanced copy of his statement and join with him paying tribute to the staff who are working flat out trying to clear up this mess. In his statement to the Parliament in May, he set out his three objectives. They were to complete payments, to minimise penalties and deliver compliance, and to set the, 20, the 2016 scheme on a proper foot, footing. And it's clear from his statement that he hasn't achieved any of these. Can you at least tell us the value of cap payments that are still outstanding? And by this, I mean the full cap payment outstanding rather than that amount less any loan payment made. And can you confirm when 100% will be paid? Fergus Ewing. Uh, yes, thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. I, I can tell the member that at, uh, as at the 9th of September, the total value processed for payment has been £326 million and that 17,744 eligible, uh, eligible businesses that we have processed payment for have received uh, these payments. There are around about 500 farmers who have yet to receive their payment in full, uh, but the majority of those presiding officer will have received the offer of a loan. It is not possible to estimate precisely the total amount that remains to be paid, because that, yet that amount is not a fixed amount. It depends on a number of other calculations. But uh, I will come back to the member uh, with that information later. Uh, so far as putting payments on a proper footing is concerned, we have made considerable progress over the summer months. Uh, and uh, I believe that we have demonstrated to the Auditor General that the warnings which were contained in her report published on the 20th of May, uh, warnings that there would be the possibility of uh, penalties of in excess of, a, of 100 million pounds, uh, that we have dealt with matters in such a way uh, that that will not happen, that we have uh, secured great progress in relation to compliance, uh, and uh, that we are busting a gut to ensure uh, that there will be a minimum difficulty possible in that regard. Emma Harper. Thank you, President Officer. Before I ask my question, I would like to put on record that First Minister has appointed me as PLO for Rural Economy and Connectivity, and I look forward to working with everyone across the Chamber in that capacity. So my question, I welcome the announcement of a new loan scheme that will inject up to £300 million into the rural economy in my region and indeed across all of Scotland this winter. Could the Cabinet Secretary provide more detail about how the loan scheme will operate where potential applicants can find out more about the scheme and whether other countries are operating a scheme like this in, for the 2016 payments. Fergus Ewing. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Under the, the loan scheme, we shall write to all farmers and crofters who are eligible for the CAP Basic Payment and Greening 216 payments with details of the scheme. We aim to write to them by the end of this month. Indeed, I have uh, been involved in revising two drafts of the letter. We shall write separately to inform any applicants who we believe will not be eligible for CAP, BPS and greening payments in 2016 to explain why this is the case. And we shall write separately to any applicants who for any reason will be offered a restricted payment due to their specific circumstances. I would urge everybody who receives a letter to respond immediately if they can and that will allow us to get their payment processed as quickly as is possible. Applicants will receive details and terms and conditions in their letter, and also there is information on our website. And there is a customer information line presiding officer, and I'm happy to provide details to all members if uh, it would be useful. So these arrangements have been put in hand, and the aim is to invite the 
uh, the uh, forms to be returned as quickly as possible and at any rate by the 12th of October to ensure that payments can be made uh, to those individuals who do so uh, in the first fortnight in November. Finlay Carson to be followed by Marie Todd. Thank you, President Officer, and thank you for the advance notice of your statement. In Galloway and Western Fries, we are still getting claims approved in the local office, but yet the IT system in Edinburgh is rejecting payments. And while I and, of course, all my colleagues welcome the loan scheme that the Cabinet Secretary has announced today and the stability it will bring farmers and, of course, rural communities right over the winter months, would the Cabinet Secretary accept and agree that this scheme is yet another admission of failure, this time with the 2016 payment run, with them, only, with them only being hopeful of substantial payments being made by June 2017? Fergus Ewing. Uh, well, the members' uh, constituents will have their claims dealt with by the Dumfries office, which I had the pleasure of visiting uh, some months ago. I can say that the Dumfries office, there are 1,372 eligible claims, paid in full 1,303, in part 29, unpaid 40. Uh, I will not be satisfied until every eligible claimant has received payment in full, but I think these figures illustrate that the position is just not as bleak as the rhetoric of the Conservatives. We have substantially completed the task, and I've accepted that there's more work to be done. Uh, but uh, I do think, uh, and I repeat this, and I'm pleased, incidentally, that he, unlike his predecessor, the official spokesman welcomed the loan scheme, so I assume that's the official response of the Conservative Party. But I do absolutely believe that farmers around the country will be pleased that a practical, helpful, sensible response to the difficulties in 15 has been brought forward by myself for the Scottish Government today. Marie Todd, to be followed by Claudia Beamish. Thank you, Presiding Officer. The Cabinet Secretary alluded to the uncertainty facing Scotland's farmers, crofters and rural communities as a result of the Tories taking us out of the EU against our will. Can he advise what he's doing to seek guarantees about the future of Scotland's cap funding? Absolutely. Fergus Ewing. Uh, what, what I would say, Presiding Officer, is that you know, I don't want this to be at all uh, political. And I welcome... <laughs> Well, I welcome the fact that you know, there was, albeit after a little while, confirmation that the Pillar 1 payments will be met by the UK government. Uh, however, we have sought confirmation, as a matter of fact, from the UK government that the money which was secure in the EU as a member of the EU for Scotland's rural community, namely the SRDP money, was secure until 2020 under the European arrangements. Now, that money for signing officer amounts to £360 million. Pounds. And sadly, despite Mr Mackay's uh, attempts to persuade David Gock of the Treasury to provide clarity about the future of that money, there is none. And therefore, that money and the farmers, the many farmers who have applied or intend to apply for schemes under the SRDP element, the Pillar 2 element of the payments, are waiting for that clarification from the UK government. And it's a simple matter of fact that that is generating far, far more uncertainty than anything else affecting rural Scotland at the current time. Claudia Beamish, followed by Willie Coffey. Thank you, Presiding Officer. The Cabinet Secretary states, in relation to the loan scheme, I quote, it has the potential to inject up to 300 million into Scotland's rural economy before the end of the year. Does the Cabinet Secretary agree that this is in no way a good news story? It's a rationalisation as the loans are only necessary if there are possible problems with the coming year's payment. And does he also agree that while it gives 80% certainty, this is still a sorry state of affairs? Fergus Ewing. No, I don't agree with that. I, I think uh, that, uh, and I hope that most farmers will agree that this is an entirely practical step. Uh, and uh, it uh, is also an approach that has been uh, mirrored, I think, in other parts of the EU, notably France. Uh, and I think the fact that I've announced today that farmers and crofters will be entitled to 80% of their basic entitlement within the qualifying limits will be a great reassurance to those who are listening and want to know the answer of when will we receive payment. 
I have been told not once, but many, many times in speaking to many people in agricultural shows, and I know that Claudia Beamish uh, is diligent in attending these as well, uh, that one thing that farmers want is clarity and certainty. They want me to say today when payment will be received. I have said that they're all entitled to a loan if they wish one, if they're eligible, and that, that those loan payments will be paid. We, uh, we are aiming for in the first fortnight in November. That is clarity. I believe that will be welcome. Willie Coffey and then Mark Ruskell. Thank you. Well, it's good that the Scottish Government has accepted Audit Scotland's recommendations in full and has begun implementing those. There are clearly many issues and lessons to, to be learned here. Could the Cabinet Secretary just flesh out a little more about what those are, please? Fergus Huey. Yes, certainly. Uh, the kernel of the issues relate not to the good work of the people who work in the area offices, the 17 area offices, uh, but the application of the IT system to an extremely complex process which involves 4 million hectares, 400,000 fields, each uh, the size of uh, four or five football pitches with the permissible area for margin of error equivalent to the area of a goal mouth. Uh, that and the complexity of the scheme uh, means that the IT systems uh, are, of course, complex. In order to respond to Mr. Coffey's question, to address the pre-existing problems. Uh, we have addressed all of the issues identified by the Auditor General in her report. I've also personally met Steve Thorne, the Senior Director of the Contractors, on the 1st of June and last week on the 7th of September. They themselves have brought forward a number of changes in respect to the computer systems. Uh, I suspect, presenting officer, without uh, laboring this answer, that I will have the opportunity before the Rural Committee to give more details of the work that we have done, the IT fixes that have been delivered, those that have not yet been delivered, and what we are doing about them to make sure that they too will be delivered. So a great deal of work has been done, and I'm very happy to account to Parliament, the Parliamentary Committee, to give more details later. Mark Ruskell, followed by Stuart Stevenson. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Can I also thank the Cabinet Secretary for advanced copy of his statement this afternoon. I notice a word that's peppered throughout the statement and indeed in his answers in this chamber is the word certainty. And can I draw attention to the plight of the organic sector in Scotland? As he says, the farmers across Scotland face a critical time. They have to make investment decisions at this point. For organic farmers, that means investment decisions about habitat management, about whether they wish to stay organic for the long term, or indeed whether they wish to convert more land to that certification. They need certainty. So can I ask him in relation to the agri-environment and climate scheme, what his government's commitment is to running this scheme in the years to come, notwithstanding the points that he's already made about the future of the SRDP? Fergus Ewing. Uh, well, well we, we have, I think, shown a considerable commitment to the uh, greening and agri-environment schemes. And indeed, uh, just uh, I think two weeks ago, I had the pleasure of meeting representatives of the Soil Association Scotland and discussing in detail uh, some of the opportunities and challenges facing the organic sector at the current time. Regarding the member's question, uh, obviously we want to continue to provide appropriate support in all of these measures, but I think it's reasonable to say that that task is made literally impossible to perform at the current time because of the lack of any clarity from the UK government about the future of Pillar 2 and rural development programmes. Stuart Stevenson and then Mike Rumbles. Um, it's a cause of some embarrassment to me as a systems engineer that at the heart of the problem is a computer development problem. It's clear that farmers have experienced pain. The government has experienced pain to its budget. Will the minister ensure that the contractor also shares some of the pain of fixing this IT problem? Fergus Ewing. I can assure Mr. Stevenson that in the meetings I've had with the contractors and uh, with the project team in Softon House, that uh, we have had a full and frank discussion about all of these issues, resulting, as I reported to Parliament earlier, earlier in the year, of a saving, a substantial saving on the contract and a driving down of costs and of improvement of performance. And therefore, I can assure Mr. Stevenson uh, that uh, the contractors, therefore, have responded 
to our requests and indeed our requirements to secure better value for money. And I know that Mr. Stevenson has ongoing interest in uh, IT uh, projects uh, uh, and uh, he will have a copious knowledge about all of these matters from his previous experience of implementing them in practice. Uh, perhaps it's a shame we didn't have his input to the project some five years ago, presiding officer. Uh, but I hope he will be pleased to hear that uh, a great deal of work has been done to address precisely the issues that he correctly raises. Mike Rumples, followed by Kate Forbes. Deputy Presiding Officer, the Minister has just confirmed that there are over 500 farm businesses that still haven't been paid what they were due nine months ago. And for the coming year, his 80% loan plan still means that the average farm business will be £6,000 out of pocket for goodness knows how long because the Minister has confirmed that the IT system isn't working and will not be running until well after all the payments are supposed to have been made. This is a dreadful admission that this year's payments aren't going to work. So how does this square with his commitment in his previous statement to this Parliament that the 2016 payments will be put on a proper footing? Fergus Hewitt. Well, <clears throat> were it the case that Mr Rumble's the series of assertions were accurate, then perhaps there may be something in his point. But since they are not, then I'm afraid there is, there's no point. He has said that he accused us of making a statement which promised to make payments after the due period. That's simply not the case. I said precisely, I said precisely the opposite, that uh, all payments uh, are, uh, the majority of payments are sought to be paid by the end of, by the end of the payment period. And therefore that doesn't follow. The second point that doesn't follow from Mr. Rumble's assertions is that whereas I said that 500 uh, cases uh, remain to be paid, uh, it, I also pointed out that in all of those cases, they should have received an offer of a loan. Uh, and therefore, we fully Mr. accept- Mr. Rumbles, please stop it, shouting from your seat. Carry uh, well, on, please, Cabinet Secretary. Yeah, uh, well, uh, I, I've made absolutely clear, clear, presiding officer, that of those 500, most of them will have received a loan, and more than that, precisely because I was concerned to ensure that that was the case. I asked my officials to go back over that in the summer. As a result, as I said in the statement, if Mr. Rumbles wants to reread it later, he will see that additional 30 cases were identified. That's because I will not be satisfied until every farmer and crofter has been paid in full, and I will get on with that job. Kate Forbes, followed by Colin Smith. Thank you, presiding officer. What assurances can the Cabinet Secretary give to those recipients of payments whose cases are deemed particularly complex but still require payments to be made in a timely fashion? Fergus Ewing. Uh, I can assure all of those uh, individuals in those circumstances that work is being done in order to uh, deal with their applications. Uh, many members will be aware in this chamber that there is always, every year, a tale of cases which pose particular difficulty. These generally fall into a number of categories uh, of uh, cross-border cases, private contract, entitlement cases, uh, cases where there is a dispute as to the area of land which is uh, permissible for the purposes of the claim. Uh, these complex cases generally do cause, and I think it's accepted, problems for some. But I want to assure every individual involved uh, in, in that position, a relatively small minority uh, thereof, that everything is being done uh, to process their claims as quickly as possible. Colin Smith and then Gail Ross. Thank, thank you, President Officer. The Cabinet Secretary referred to what was the exceptional decision that penalties would be waived for payments made from the 1st of July to the 15th of October. Now, given that that decision was exceptional. Can you tell the Chamber whether future penalties for late payments will also be waived? And if not, how much will those penalties cost? Fergus Ewing. Uh, well, we, we uh, myself and the First Minister, lobbied Commissioner Hogan, I think it was on the, the 20th of, of May, uh, and uh, we were very pleased that our efforts, and there were other, uh, uh, other uh, EU member states, in, uh, I mentioned France, who also sought a similar approach. We were very pleased that we received a sympathetic hearing uh, from uh, Commissioner Hogan. Uh, and that means that the fears identified quite reasonably by the Auditor General in her report will not come to pass. 
And I think that's a major step forward, and it's a tribute to all of the hard work done by the staff in the area offices. Uh, a, as to future years, uh, well, that will depend whether we, we uh, remain fully in the EU as we wish to do, uh, does it not? Because at the moment, uh, there is uh, absolutely no plan from the UK government in relation to what happens uh, in the, the next uh, five years. Uh, however, we will always work to minimise uh, any difficulties and maximise compliance, and that's what I think we've done with some success over the past few months. Gail Ross, followed by John Lamont. Thank you, President Officer. What engagement does the Cabinet Secretary have planned going forward with members of the farming industry to inform additional improvements to the system? Fergus <coughs> Uh, well, we, we do uh, engage through our area offices with farmers. Indeed, uh, what I've discovered in visits is that many of the people who work in our area offices throughout the country are themselves members of the farming community and have been or are farmers themselves. Um, so we do provide uh, a great deal of information through area offices. Uh, and uh, I know that the staff there are uh, extremely adept and capable of providing helpful information. As far as the uh, other means of providing information, I've already made clear that we are contacting every eligible farmer in relation to the loan, and that process has been set up and uh, uh, with clear leadership responsible for that reporting to me. Uh, and of course, we are very happy to use the, uh, the uh, uh, excellent uh, organs such as the Scottish Farmer to promote uh, with great accuracy the steps that uh, are necessary to be taken by farmers to take up the loan scheme which will deliver uh, up to £300 million into the rural Scotland and the farming community uh, in the, the early part of November. John Lamont, followed by Edward Mountain. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I've been contacted by many constituents in the borders who have been adversely affected by the failure of the Scottish Government <clears throat> to deliver their CAP payment on time. Many have incurred significant consequential losses as a result. What is the Minister's response to those who say that the Government should pick up these losses too? Fergus Ewing. Uh, well, I, obviously I respond to any individual cases that are raised to me by MSPs, uh, and that includes Mr Lamont. I, 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 uh, haven't, uh, I don't believe I've received any such case from him. If I receive it, then I will study it uh, very carefully. But I can say that... Uh, uh, you know, I, I think that the case for consequential loss is one that uh, I have not seen many governments uh, accept for a number of pretty good reasons. But uh, uh, if Mr. Lamont can uh, come up with a series of arguments, then I promise to look at them. I'm very happy to consider them in any relevant case if he wants to write to me. I have two question requests after Mr. Mountain, so if we're all fairly succinct, we shall manage to get them all in. Edward Mountain. Presiding officer, I would like to declare an interest being a farmer, uh, sorry, part of a farm partnership. I would like to join the Cabinet Secretary in thanking the staff in the area offices for all the extra work they've undertaken in unpicking this disaster which was predicted but not admitted at this time last year. Could the Cabinet Secretary please now tell uh, us the cost of the extra work that the staff have undertaken, including the cost of the overtime, and the extra hours they put in, and the extra people that have been employed over and above the IT costs, which no doubt he'll be telling the Royal Economy Committee about next week. Thank you. Fergus Ewing. Well, I, I value the, uh, the, the extraordinary effort that's been made by staff throughout our, our ARPID offices. Uh, and the focus, uh, I, I can assure Mr Mountain and all members, has been on making absolutely certain that we are processing the claims as quickly as we possibly could. Uh, if that has involved an amount of overtime, I think that was, uh, that was uh, money well spent. Uh, if that's something that the committee chaired by Mr Mountain wishes to pursue, then of course I can look into that specific question uh, and examine it. But uh, I, think, uh, I think that the effort made by the staff was well worth paying, and in the circumstances uh, it was absolutely the right thing to do. Brian Whittle, followed by John Scott. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Uh, statistics are often thrown about in this chamber, but statistics are people, and in this case, they're Scottish farmers. And I wonder if the Cabinet Secretary, Secretary recognises 
then the mention of the percentage of those farmers who have received some payments is of cold comfort and little help to those whose debt continues to rise without their cap payments now nine months overdue. Thanks, Jane. I, well, I've, I've made it clear on, on several occasions, I think, that and I entirely accept that, uh, that uh, any farmer who hasn't received a payment in, in full uh, will obviously uh, feel disappointed or angry or aggrieved about that. And that's precisely why I'm very pleased that we've made such progress uh, since uh, I stood before Parliament on the last occasion. And we will continue uh, to leave no stone unturned in order to get all payments out to all farmers as quickly as we possibly can. And finally, John Scott. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer, and declaring an interest as a farmer. Uh, the Cabinet Secretary will be aware of the reducing profitability of Scottish farming as evidenced by the accumulated farming debt of £2.2 billion. Given the need to encourage new entrants into farming, how does he see this being achieved against the background of reducing profitability and growing debt as overseen by the Scottish Government since 2007? Uh, well, well, first of all, I think it's reasonable, um, and I think Mr Scott would perhaps agree with this, that it's reasonable to point out that the support of the banks over difficult periods over the last year has been very much appreciated. Uh, and the joint working I do with banks, and indeed I met some recently, is something that uh, we very much value. Uh, and I'd like to thank all of the banks involved in, really as part of the farming community, uh, rural community in Scotland for their efforts. Secondly, I think it's reasonable to point out that the recent statistics about the level of average debt reveal that, yes, the average level of debt per farm uh, has increased in Scotland. But uh, what hasn't been mentioned by our friends in opposition is that it actually increased by a higher level in the rest of the UK. Uh, and of course, the decision to take on more debt is done for a number of reasons. Uh, but on a, on a positive note, I was very pleased to see that reports from some of the sales, not least one I heard about from uh, the sale of 11,000 lambs at Dalmally, reported very good prices. So I hope that everything else aside, we can all agree that's a good thing. That completes this item of business. I will give a few seconds for change round to our next item of business.